are there? How many of them would there be? Uh, well, there's going to be a lot of these uh, Avon ones. Alright, you guys can get your autonomy. That's the spirit, Siege Dan Wang Nan. Unfortunately, Calm is trying to take that fort back, but I don't think they'll succeed too well. That's still a lot of Ming units, but look at that, we have the War Goal, and he already wants peace. Well, Ming, I'm afraid I won't peace out for anything less than all of your money. Well, I need a 10% war score to do that. However, I can make that happen somehow, some way. Curse you, your mentioned rune factory the other night got me playing again. Now I'm a leveling addict, says Punk Rockley. Don't forget to level your sleeping and your intake of poison and your walking and bathing skills. What a great game. Alright, there we go. To be expected, Ava have risen up. Uh, there are a lot of them, sire. Why did I move to Ava? Ava was the last place I wanted to have this happen in. Oh well, we'll still take them on and hopefully win. And when we roll a 12 to a 7 and an 8 to a 3, I certainly think we can win. This is going to be a fairly expensive war, I believe. Oh, I could save this province, but there's no real incentive for me to do so. Let's just hang back, take it easy, enjoy ticking war score against Ming, and then force them out. They seem to be dealing with their revolts at this time, which isn't good for me. But we'll have it down. You inspired me to pick up Death Road to Canada. It's a great little game, says Travis D. Controls are more difficult than I expected, so props to your skill at it. Yes, I was just thinking of that earlier. Uh, so tomorrow I fully intend to do a multiplayer Death Road to Canada, because I sorted out the Steam Remote Play stuff, thanks to a little help from the likes of uh, Worm, Cooler, Nix, and Max all helping out with testing that. So we'll actually be able to have people join in the game as we make the perilous journey up to Canada. So I'll be starting that tomorrow. Alright, they're on their way into Ava. Fortunately, there's a river crossing. And super fortunately, they don't have more maneuver than me. So they get to eat it. I outflank them. And then I don't roll quite as well proportional to last time. But we win. And if I can secure a fort off of Ming, then it would be good fight, good bloody night to them. Let us get ourselves a wee cannon just to help out with that. Let's also be happy that we're not going to face revolt risk in Ava for some time, and we didn't have to increase autonomy to make that a reality. I can wait out for the um, for the war score, but what I'd much rather do is just grab Chengdu. If I could grab Chengdu whilst I still have military tech advantage, what I want is the money and the money. That would boost my economy so much I would plow that into buildings, which is something I almost never do. Are you going for the gold province? Uh, I want to have as few provinces around here as possible. I don't want to directly take more provinces than this, with the exception of maybe a few more on the coastline so that I can have a not-so-crummy navy. I'm already at, or yeah, I'm already at the sailor limit. I should strongly consider building some boats, at least some transports. Build some transports and keep them docked in. Um, keep them docked in Pegu because there's a fort there. Diplomatic insult in Ayutthaya. How dare they insult me? They're also enjoying a war right now, and whilst I do this, I'm in a perfect opportunity to declare reconquest on Ayutthaya, especially since Siak won't get involved. But I need to secure my ah, crumbs. I need to secure my victory against Ming first, and I think taking Chengdu is the best way to do that. I'd like to take Beijing, but that's an Aeon away, so let's go for Chengdu, because it's really powerful. Bengal is eating coalition, which is awesome news for me. I want them deconstructed like the harem genre. Let's activate all of our forts, just in case Ming launch a surprise attack. And march through Dali. We know how we feel about Dali, right? Hold on, was that Bengal entering a military coalition? No, they're the target of Jharkhand and Yumla. No! No, not the war goal! I need that. Well, I want that. I don't need it, but... Ah, oh, right, I forgot my cannon. That cannon of mine that's against regulation. Ah. Uh... 
I don't have much siege to make Chengdu go faster, but if I take it, I'm in a great position for all of this. A white elephant. Let's take good care of it. I'll trade Dosh for uh, prestige at this point. I certainly need prestige. Unfortunately, he's gunning down Puer, and he might actually gun me down as well. But I want my subject, Lang Shang, to take over Guang Nan for me so we can get that war, uh, war score rolling. The Ming army is pitiful, like truly pitiful, and I can win battles against it. But I'd rather have a fairly cheap war going here. I don't want it to be expensive. Grab Chengdu for war score, grab Guang Nang to go with that, and we're all pretty good. That looks like Lang Shang's going for it. I'm kind of a bit over, uh, over spending my units here, sieging down Chengdu, so I shall uh, branch out a little bit. May as well loot the bugger blind while we're here. What would be even better is if he goes to lay siege to my subject Lang Shang, because I can double back and slaughter him at a moment's notice. Hello! Why are we not still moving? We gotta get out of the way of that. That's my precious cannon we're talking about. <clears throat> what are you doing, Lang Shang? Get to your assigned area. Alright, Ming seems content in just wasting everybody's time, especially alone. We'll keep our units together. I just saw farmlands around here anyway, but we'll be okay like this. Build a spy, a spy network against Ming. I certainly do have the lazy diplomats, so it can be done. But it would be nice to have better relationships with certain people, like my allies. That would be a good one. <clears throat> Khmer. They're probably burning a bit from all that stuff. Okay, so as expected, Ming are on the move here, but I'm ready for that with my forts. I should be able to take down Chengdu faster than they can deal with anything. Hello, they want to take us on in Chengdu, that's fine by me. Should be an easy victory for us, because his mandate is down the toilet and he still only has tech 6. He got there faster than I'd expected, but we're in, we're flanking, and we are not, not quite dismantling him, but certainly kicking his arse. Unfortunately, the uh, the coalition against Bengal fell apart already. Okay, look who else is going in for it. Lang Shang. And he's making a Lang mess of it. Oh, God, please don't cost me that war score again. Jake, did you embargo your rivals? I'll admit it's something I often forget to do. But I didn't forget to embargo you. I didn't forget to embargo you. Do you have any self-imposed roadblocks planned, asks Art Young. I want to stick strictly to the Roman uh, Roman borders. According to our numbers here, I'm losing this war. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in losing. But once I get Chengdu, which I have just done, that didn't give me quite as much uh, war score as I was expecting. But perhaps slaughtering the uh, Ming armies will help. It's also somewhere for him to uh, gravitate towards. I think I'll also have Lang Shang take occupation of it so he can pay for it rather than me. You'll eventually move your home provinces to keep Roman borders. Uh, I mean contiguous Roman borders in Europe and greater Europe. I don't care about stuff that I keep in Southeast Asia, but I can't afford much of it right now. Alright, they ran away. I need to secure that war goal for our continued prosperity here. But it looks like I don't have many soldiers to fear here, so I will depart a couple to hold that down and then go and swarm him with this. I've beaten down, is he? That's eight. Oh, it's quite big, actually. Let's not, let's not spare many units here. We have a great general, at least. General Pai Muang Yi is pretty good at this. I could bring in allies, but I certainly don't want to kick people. Right, that's it. This phone's going.
God, I hate phones. All right, what was I even thinking about? Probably just letting influenza spread its own way around. My dad often gets agitated because I never uh, pay any attention to my phone. And I said, I have a phone so that I can call other people. I don't have it for other people to call me. I don't think he liked that, but too bad. All right, we managed to gain the war goal back again. Slaughter those Chinese, the only way we know how, by answering violence with ultra-violence. That's a fort there, but it's fine because it's under rebel command. Might be nice to actually lay some sieges down on uh, wealthy provinces around here, which are not, control uh, not blocked by a zone of control. Just some of this coastline and Luzhou. There's a slight risk that we just uh, run into some Ming units, but we're slaughtering the Ming units that we find. Puer is up for grabs. I'm not looking to take land off of China, there's little reason to. Go on then, where are you gonna go? Shen Wei, Shen, you dead. Oh no, he can make a he can make a run for it into Mong Watsits. It's fine, chase him down as far as we need to. Oh, that dirty devil wants to head up there. I'm a bit faster than he is, and he doesn't have long on me. But unfortunately, he's going to be defending in the mountains. <laughs> well, there's that professionalism I was after. Uh, I don't like fighting him in these mountains, but I won't take a river crossing penalty, and I am far stronger than he is, or so I'm led to believe. So I'm led to believe he's got a lot better morale than I do. That cost me a lot of units for a, for a win there. And the uh, provinces I took are being desieged, which is also unfortunate. But I'm here to bully Ming, and I won't have it any other way. Well, just look who's getting their teeth kicked in there. Ayutthaya, what do you even have left at this point? They have 8,000 of their finest regulars, and their capital is under siege from their rebels. Once I have Ming in a profitable place... <sighs> oh... Would I trade about a thousand ducats for the opportunity to jump on Ayutthaya pretty much immediately? Some questions are too difficult for man to work out on his own, so let's take a moment to grab exploration ideas, because heavens knows that we need them. I've got to find my way over to Europe some way, somehow. Quest of the New World, Colonial Ventures, I take them all. And as soon as I can, I want to explore and colonize the Andaman. Jake, go for the for money. Okay, says Death Eye. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's very little reason not to, but we need a chunk of war score for it. Which means I need to slaughter his armies a bit more to get it easily. with all the attrition there. Uh, well, I guess being tropical does hurt a bit. But you should get what you need back in time to go and explore these other places. Yeah. Who needs land in Southeast Asia is prome anyway. Well, we're not after lands in Southeast Asia. I'm after kicking Ming squarely in the teeth for all of his money. Where's he even running to? Now, seriously, where is he running to? Can he even run that far? 
That's not all he has left, though. I shouldn't be too complacent. What would the inflation be for the 3,000? 7.71, or 7.17, and that is 120% worth it. It would be a bad move not to take it, frankly. What would force me to an early peace is if the Dali Separatists start taking the war goal back. I have no intention of fighting out a protracted war against his rebels. If I can wrap it up faster, that gives me an excellent opportunity to just gun down Ayutthaya. And that is an, an opportunity I fully intend to take. But if I could gun down his ally, his uh, armies, that would go even better for me. Hmm. All right, I need to figure out what I want. Coexistence is too slow. I need to repress those natives. I'll probably just kill them all on my way. Oh, oh, crap! This is what I meant about uh, protracted fights against his rebels. That just hurts me. That kind of stuff. First off, I should declare war on Ayutthaya as soon as I can, so we are uh, poised and ready to go in for the fight without Ming getting involved. So I shall make this for Vientiane. No, I should make it for something I can easily take, like San Venachom. Wom. Could you take Canton to wrap up the war faster? Canton will take me forever to take. Very nice province, sure but uh, a coastal pain in the rear end. Alright, this is fun and all, Ming, but uh, it's in my favor to gun down Ayutthaya as soon as I can. And I'm sure you'll have money for me later on as well. So I'll make do with that. It's a lack of greed, very unbecoming of me, but I'll take it. Unfortunately, I'm still wrapped up fighting his bloomin' rebs, but I'd be happy to just run away to secure fewer losses myself. It's a rebel fight, so nobody really cares. Let's all get back to uh, the relative safety of Ava. Oh no, you're heading to not Ava. Alright, good enough. We lost some people, but that's what I have tributaries for. And I'm glad I slapped all the money I could out of Mong what's his face? Mong Pai because Mong Nai has dominated. Alright, so now I'm at war with Ayutthaya, who is burning hard. Oh, right, this one stack still exists. They're also on their way back. Watch him get intercepted by Dali rebels. That's why I peaced out when I was in his land. We've got Black Flag, so we have a safe route back. There's Ayutthaya picking on my subject. Langshang does, to my surprise, have an army. Let's get our navy back together in one place. Let's also consider our best to invest that money. I'm thinking temples... Loads of temples. Gotta make that money work for you, you know. Uh, I would also be well-pressed to start coring up my land. Especially the good parts of it. Well, that would be this area. Tabayin, I'll probably just leave as it is. There's a good chance I won't have it in general for too long because it's in this area, and this area kind of blows just a bit. But Tabayin is also my primary culture, so I'm a little bit torn. Expertly done for loads of dosh. Alright, Sagain, all done and dusted. The money situation is pretty tight. Especially when we get those war reparations off of the Ming. It's paying for my inflated army maintenance due to reinforcements. Now let's go and take on Ayutthaya. Siak is doing what exactly here? Oh, jeez. Diviet's at war with them as well. 
I need to deny Diviet that land that they're after, because it belongs to my subject. Hopefully Ayutthaya takes the fight to them, but they might not. Hmm, Patani's going for that. Crumbs, Diviet's going for their claims here. That might make me come to blows with Diviet down the line. It might not, though. Land in my allies' hands isn't too shabby in the grander scheme of things. But let's just try to make sure that Diviet is contained. Well, he's going in. Going in for the kill. No, I should wait and hope that Diviet loses that battle. He probably won't, though. Oh, he's got that one in the bag. But he's not sieging land. Oh, he is sieging land. What a bummer. It's stopping me from keeping him uh, under wraps. I'll go onto this siege just so that if it is dropped, I'm the one that picks it up. Oh, okay. Well, that's one way to drop a siege. Oh, that's another way to drop a siege. Seems they pieced out. Well, somebody pieced out. What was all that about, Patani? They care more about Siak, who's dying horribly there. Interesting. He'll need a fort, though. Mmm, that he will. Will he? No, I don't think so. I think it got patched so that if there are no forts available to be taken, then that rule won't apply. That's what I choose to remember. He didn't drop the siege, so I can happily split up and move on to Khorat. But yeah, I could deny him any of the forts. That means I'd have to make sure that this and Ayutthaya itself... It'll at least stop him from getting a lot of war score. Damn. How does he know? Oh, he had five maneuver. He was a whole lot faster than me at moving over there. Fair enough. Not too impressed with uh, having to be the one that follows here. Tirhut is going to attack Bengal. What would give Tirhut the enormous brass to do that? <clears throat> I guess there is the coalition. The coalition that includes not a lot. <clears throat> but if Tirhut were to also bring in Jumla, well, that still doesn't mean much. I think Bengal's going to flatten them. Anti-clericalism. Well, it's always uh, Prostia that's giving me these issues. That said, I like the idea of getting Dosh, and I like the idea of dropping the autonomy over in Prostia. Yoink. And sure, it makes the merchant guilds unhappy, but aren't they often unhappy? Let's just make them a touch unhappier by... Sure, I'll give them merchant charters. Ooh, I want the New World Charter now as well. And I wouldn't mind a fresh new admiral. Also, I can punch you for 150 dip points. They go straight into overseas exploration. And then... I'm going to need some lights so that I can actually do some exploring. Let's get the barks. <clears throat> and keep it going. Did you get a chance to play CK3? I am certainly not going to be talking about uh, unrevealed paradox projects. That would be... I don't think it would strictly be illegal, but it would certainly be a breach of contract. And that would burn more bridges than any one man should ever really burn. Probably stay here so we have enough to siege this down. You go there. You go there. You get on that. And then we'd have Ayutaya on the fence. But he's not dead yet. He still has a couple of annoying small armies floating about. Darn, says Pompey Magnus 0124. Darn indeed. Bigger darn than dying on the death road. And I'm, I'm more excited than I really ought to be about braving the death road. But there's a death road to be braved. wonder if I can convince Diviet to siege this up for me. Where's Diviet's armies, actually? What is that guy up to? 
Oh wow, I'm not the only one that thought 